Om Shanti 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 Om Sāpakāya Jadharmasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Sāpakāya Jadharmasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Avadar Varishtaya Rama Krishna Yate Rava Asatoma Sad Gamaya Tamasoma Jodir Gamaya Pratyorma Brutangamaya Om Shanti 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 let us offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme God Incarnate, who came to establish universal religion. Let us pray to Him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. Today's topic I have chosen Resoluteness in Renunciation. One has to be strongly determined in the spiritual path. One should not be shaken under any circumstances. So many temptations may come, so many troubles may come, so many crises may come. You may be in some kind of Hapless predicament, still you must not be shaken in your resoluteness. It is only through renunciation one attains immortality. The Karmadana Prajaya Dhanena Tyage Naike Amatatva Manashuhu. The great brother Nikopanishad has very clearly mentioned. Immortality is attained only through Tyaga, not by karma, not by progeny, not by wealth, only by renunciation. Sri Ramakrishna said, there are two signs of knowledge. First, an unshakable buddhi. Sri Ramakrishna explains it very clearly and effectively. No matter how many sorrows, afflictions, dangers and obstacles one may be faced with, one's mind does not undergo any change. It is like the blacksmith's anvil which receives constant blows from the hammer and still remains unshaken. And second, Sri Ramakrishna mentions manliness, that is, very strong grit. If lust and anger injure a man, he must renounce them once for all. If a tortoise once tucks it in its limbs, it won't put them out again, though you may cut into four pieces. Then Sri Ramakrishna says, there are two kinds of renunciation, intense and feeble. Feeble renunciation is a slow process. One moves in a slow rhythm. Intense renunciation is like the sharp edge of a razor. It cuts the bondage of maya easily and at once. Sri Ramakrishna gives the example to clarify this idea. One farmer labors for days to bring water from the lake to his field. But his efforts are futile because he has no grit. Another farmer, after laboring for two or three days, takes a vow and says, I will bring water into my field today, and not till then will I go home. He puts aside all thought of his bath or his meal. He labors the whole day and feels great joy when in the evening he finds water entering his field with a murmuring sound. Then he goes home and says to his wife, 
Now, give me some oil, I should take my bath. After finishing his bath and his meal, he lies down to sleep with a peaceful mind. A certain woman said to her husband, So and so has developed a spirit of great dispassion for the world. But I don't see anything of the sort in you. She is uh, indirectly taunting the husband. She further said, He has sixteen wives. He is giving them up one by one. The husband with a towel on his shoulder was going to the lake for his bath. He said to his wife, You are crazy. He won't be able to give up the world. Is it ever possible to renounce bit by bit? I can renounce. Look here, I go. He didn't drop. He didn't stop even to settle his household affairs. He left home just as he was, the towel on his shoulder, and went away. That is intense renunciation. There is another kind of renunciation called Markata Vairagya, monkey renunciation. A man, harrowed by distress at home, puts on an ochre rope and goes away to Benares. For many days he doesn't send home any news of himself. Then, after some time, he writes to his people, Don't be worried about me. I have got a job here. There's always trouble in family life. The wife may be disobedient. Perhaps the husband earns only 20 rupees a month. He has not the means to perform the rice-eating ceremony for his baby. He cannot educate his son. The house is dilapidated. The roof leaks and he has not the money to repair it. Sri Ramakrishna said, Why shouldn't a man be able to realize God in the world? But he must have discrimination and dispassion. He must have the unshakable awareness that God alone is real and all else is unreal and has put and has but a two days existence. He will not do to float on the surface. You must dive deep. With these words, Sri Ramakrishna sang, Dive deep, O mind, dive deep in the ocean of God's beauty. If you descend to the uttermost depths, there you will find the gem of love. You must remember another thing. In the ocean there is danger of alligators, that is to say, of lust and the like. Girish said, Sir, I am not afraid of the king of death. Master said, but I am speaking of the danger of the alligators of lust and the like. Because of them, one should smear one's body with turmeric before diving in the turmeric of discrimination and dispassion. Some attain knowledge of God in the world. Mention is made of two yogi, two classes of yogis, the hidden and the known. Those who have renounced the world are known yogis. All recognize them. But the hidden yogis live in the world. They are not known. They are like the maid servant who performs her duties in the house, house, in the house, but whose mind is fixed on her children in the country. They are also, as I have told you, like the loose woman who performs her household duties zealously, but whose mind constantly dwells on her lover. It is very hard to cultivate discrimination and dispassion. It is not easy to get rid of the idea. I am the master and all these are mine. I saw a deputy magistrate who earns a salary of 800 rupees paying no attention to a religious discourse. He had brought one of his children with him and was busy finding a good place for him to sit. I know another man, Sri Ramakrishna says, whom I shall not name, who used to devote a great deal of time to Japa. But he bore false witness in court for the sake of 10,000 rupees. Therefore I say that a man can realize God in the world too, but only if he has discrimination and dispassion. The greatest challenge for the truly virtuous is to cope with the tight spot when their very integrity becomes suspect. It is very difficult to face such a situation when one is pure and true at heart and yet becomes an object of censure and blame. Bharata, 
in ramayan he faced such a humiliating experience on his return to a grief stricken ayodhya his plight was fraught with an extraordinary twist that was most painful even as it was most unexpected bharat became a victim of developments over which he had no hold the irony was that he was falsely held responsible for the 14 years banishment of his beloved brother rama and the demise of his dear father in fact he stood helpless as he mourned the death of his father in the absence of his brother what added to his anguish was that he was saddled with the burden of kingship that he had never wanted and would never want on the one hand was his mother kaikeyi offering a kingdom that she had maneuvered from the rightful heir lord rama and on the other was the rest of the world against him with charges of coveting his own brother's kingdom see what a predicament he is facing with if he was angered at his mother who caused such embarrassment he was more hurt by the momentary sarcasm and doubt in kausalya's speech a broken hearted bharat vowed that he would incur the worst punishments for the worst misdeeds if kausalya suspected his true intentions kausalya regained her composure after recalling lord rama's precise assessment of the noble bharat for he had claimed with foresight that bharat would never accept the kingdom contrite and ashamed at her misjudgment of such a righteous soul who stood unfaulted by any standards she reassured him bharat who remained unwavering about accepting the kingdom pledged to bring back lord rama to ayodhya at any cost the spirit of renunciation is something that is deeply felt within oneself and is a state of mind independent of any outward display scriptures reinforce this inward quality as the only decisive factor for renunciation bharata's resoluteness in denouncing the kingdom that his mother had won for him is worthy of high admiration shri ramakrishna says one or two parables regarding the quality of renunciation a husband and wife renounced the world and together undertook a pilgrimage to various holy shrines once as they were walking along a road the husband being a little ahead of the wife saw a piece of diamond on the road immediately he began to scratch the ground to hide the diamond in it thinking that if his wife saw it but chance she might be moved to avarice and thus lose the merit of her renunciation while he was thus scratching the ground the wife came up and asked him what he was doing he gave her an apologetic tone an evasive reply she however finding out the diamond and reading his thoughts remarked why did you leave the world if you still feel the distinction between diamond and dust then shri ramakrishna tells how does a man come to have vairagya a wife once said to her husband dear i am very anxious about my brother for the past one week he has been thinking of becoming an ascetic and has been busy preparing for that life he is trying to reduce gradually all his desires and wants the husband replied dear be not at all anxious about your brother he will never become a sanyasin no one can become a sanyasin that way how does one become a sanyasin then asked the wife thus exclaimed the husband so saying he tore his flowering dress to pieces took a piece and tied it round his loins and told his wife that she and all of her sex the gender were thenceforth mothers to him he left the house never more to return i shall complete it by and by i am about to take it up i am going to begin this all this is indicative of pro 
procrastin- procrastinating mood and can result only in a lukewarm spirit of vairagya but he in whose heart the fire of renunciation burns intensely who pants after god as a mother's heart does for a child he wants nothing except god to him the world appears like a well without a wall and he is always cautious lest he should fall into it he doesn't think like others let me first settle my family affairs and then i shall meet it on god he has a fiery determination within him once a fisherman stealthily entered the garden of a certain gentleman in the night and was poaching fish in his pond the gentleman having come to know of this ordered his men to surround the place and came with torches to find the thief in the meantime the fisherman finding no means of escape sat down underneath a tree like a sadhu having smeared his body with some ashes so when the people came they found no thief anywhere but only a sadhu besmeared with holy ashes and deeply absorbed in meditation underneath a tree next morning it was made known to the people of the neighborhood that a great sadhu had come to such and such a person's garden and so hundreds of people began to pour in with various presents of fruits and sweets to pay their homage to the sadhu coins of silver and gold also began to gather in heaps before him then the fisherman thought within himself how wonderful i am not a real sadhu still they are showing so much reverence to me then assuredly if i become a real sadhu i can realize god thus even mere pretension brought about real awakening in the mind of that fisherman once a brahmin met a sanyasin and both had a long talk on worldly and religious topics at last the sanyasin said to the brahmin look child there is no depending upon anyone in this world none whom you call you your own is yours the brahmin would not believe it how could he think that those for whom he was toiling day and night that is the members of his own family were not his friends on whom he could count for help so the brahmin said sir when i am troubled with even a slight headache my mother is so much concerned that she is ready to give up even her life gladly if it will only bring relief to me that such a mother is not a friend whom i can depend upon is something i can't conceive the sanyasin replied if such be the case then of course she is a friend but to tell you the truth you are greatly mistaken never believe for a moment that your mother wife and son will sacrifice their lives for your sake you can verify the truth of this if you like go home and feign excruciating pain in your stomach and groan with it i will come and show you some fun the brahmin was so confident about his family he acted accordingly what the sadhu said he was pretending as if he was having tremendous stomach pain physicians were called in but no one could afford any relief the mother of the patient was sighing and sorrowing the wife and children were crying the sanyasin turned up at this moment the disease is of a serious nature said the sanyasin and i do not see any chance of the patient's recovery unless someone comes forward to give up his or her life for the sake of the patient at this all of them looked aghast the sanyasin addressing the old mother of the patient said to live or to die will be the same thing to you if in your old age you lose your son who wants for himself and for you all if you can give your life in exchange for his i can save your son if you as his mother cannot make this sacrifice for him who else in this world will care to do it the old woman blubbered forth through her tears revered father i am ready to do anything you order for the sake of my son but the thing is 
my own life and what is my life in comparison to that of my son they thought what will become of my little ones after my death makes me a coward unfortunate that i am these little ones are in my way while listening to this dialogue between the sanyasin and the mother in law the wife of the patient wept bitterly and said addressing her own parents for your sake dear father and mother i can't make the sacrifice the sanyasin turned to her and asked her whether she would not sacrifice her life for the sake of her husband now that his mother had fallen back the wife said the wretch that i am if you know who this to be my lot be it so i can't make up my mind to cause grief to my father and mother for the loss of their child in this way everyone wriggled out of the difficulty then the sanyasin told the patient look now no one is ready here to sacrifice their life for you do you understand now what i meant by saying that there is no depending upon anybody in this world when the brahmin saw all this he abandoned his so called home and followed the sanyasin another story shri ramkrishna tells a disciple said to his guru that his wife loved him very much and so he could not renounce the world the disciple used to practice at yoga to convince him of the hollowness of this plea the guru taught him some secrets of this branch of yoga one day all on a sudden there was a great consternation in the disciple's house and wailings and sobbings were heard all around the neighbors came running to the house and saw the hat yogi disciple in a room quite motionless in a peculiar convoluted posture they all thought that life was extinct in the body the wife of the man crying alas where have you gone dear where have you forsaken us ah oh, we never knew that such a calamity would befall us in the meantime the relatives brought a cart to take the corpse out of care to take the corpse out for cremation then they found themselves face to face with a serious difficulty as a man was in a contorted posture his body would not come out through the door seeing that one of the neighbors brought an axe and began to cut the wooden frame of the door till then the wife was weeping in an uncontrollable fit of sorrow but no sooner did she hear the sound of the axe than she ran to the spot and though still weeping anxiously inquired what they were about one of the neighbors told her that they were cutting the door as her husband's body could not otherwise be taken out owing to its peculiar posture no no cried out the wife don't do so now i have been widowed and there is none to look after me i have to bring up my fatherless children if you now cut the door it cannot be repaired again whatever has to happen whatever was to happen has happened to my husband you had better cut his hands and legs and take him out hearing this the hatiyogi at once stood up the effect of the drug having gone by this time and bawled out woman you want to cut my hands and legs and so saying he went away with his guru renouncing hearth and home once while going to kamarpukur shri ramkrishna said i was overtaken by a storm i was in the middle of a big meadow the place was haunted by robbers i began to repeat the names of all the deities rama krishna and bhagavati i also repeated the name of hanuman i chanted the names of them all what does that mean let me tell you while the servant is counting out the money to purchase supplies he says these pennies are for potatoes these for egg plants these for fish he counts the money separately but after the list is completed he puts the coins together when one develops love of god one likes to talk only of god if you love a person you love to talk and hear about him then shri ramkrishna gives a very example nice example the worldly person's mouth waters while he talks about his son that's true you can watch anybody any father unknowingly what comes out of his mouth if someone praises his son he will at once say to the boy go and get some water for your uncle to wash his feet <laughs> those who love pigeons 
are highly pleased if you praise pigeons before them. But if you speak ill of pigeons, they will at once exclaim, Has anyone in our line for 14 generations ever raised pigeons? Like they will like the shout. Shri Ramakrishna, now addressed by Mahimacharan, who was a householder. Shri Ramakrishna said, What need is there of renouncing the world altogether? It is enough if you can rid yourself of attachment. But you must have sadhana. You have to fight the sense organs. It is a great advantage to fight from inside a fort. You get much help from the fort. The world is the place for enjoyment. After enjoying different things, you should give them up one by one. Once I had a desire to put a gold chain around my waist. I have obtained one at last and put it on, but I had to take it off immediately. Once I ate some onion, while eating the onion, I discriminated, oh mind, this is onion. Then I moved it to different places in my mouth and at last spat it out. <laughs> a musician was expected yes, to sing with his party. Sri Ramakrishna asked the devotees every now and then, where is the musician? Mahima said, we are quite alright as we are. Master said, no sir, we get this all through the year. A devotee outside the room said, the musician has come. Sri Ramakrishna was filled with joy and said, Oh, has he? Mats were spread on the floor of the long veranda, northeast of the master's room. Sri Ramakrishna said, Sprinkle a little Ganges water on the mats. Many worldly people have sat on them. So, resoluteness is important in spiritual path. He must be really very strong and determined. Then only he will realize God. Unshakable resoluteness under all circumstances in all hapless predicament. Look at Bharat how he was placed in such a precarious position yet he did not aspire for kingdom. It was offered to him. He rejected it wholeheartedly. No, I won't take. Take the case of Nachiketas. Yama offered lots of luxuries power, position, name, everything, whatever he wanted, plus something more. Nanchikesa rejected them outright. Never, sir, no. I want spiritual knowledge, nothing else. Yama was stunned. He, st he was stunned because young boy, it is not a man of 70 years old talking like that. I have renounced everything. I am ready for spiritual. Life. No, he was a young boy. See the paradox. If they are young, he is too young, let him enjoy, they will say. After enjoyment, he becomes useless. What should be, what should be done? World is like that. So it is tricky. It deceives you. If you are careless, you are deceived by the world. You become aware of the reality when it is too late. You are on the deathbed and you want to renounce. It won't happen that way. So when you are young, energetic, full of vigor, that is the time, correct time to formate your life. Not that you should not practice spirituality after some years, after getting experience in the world, not that. But the effectiveness is more when the mind is not yet tainted by the rubbishness of the world. Anyway, everybody has to learn through one's own experience. So today's lesson is resoluteness in denunciation. Page 985, Yam said, What did he say after listening to your songs? Narendra replied, He went into Samadhi. He said to Ram Babu, Who is this boy? How well he sings. He asked me to come again. Yam said, What did you see him next? Where did you see him next? Yam asked. Narendra replied, at Raj Mohan's house. The third visit was at Dakshineshwar again. During that visit, he went into Samadhi, referring to Sri Ramakrishna, and began to praise me, and Sri Ramakrishna began to praise me as if I were God. He said to me, O Narayan, you have assumed this body for my sake, but please don't tell this to anybody else. Sri Ramakrishna is telling. Yam said, What else did he say? Nananda said. Master said, 
I have assumed this body for my sake. I ask the Divine Mother, Mother, unless I enjoy the company of some genuine devotees, completely free from lust and gold, how shall I live in the earth? How shall I live on earth? Then he said to me, You came to me at night, woke me up and said, Here I am. But I did not know anything of this. I was sound asleep in our Calcutta house. He said, In other words, you may be both present and absent at the same time. It is like God, who is both formless and endowed with form. Narendra said, But you must not tell this to anyone else. At Kashipur, he transferred his powers to me. He said, Didn't it happen when you used to meditate before a lighted fire under a tree at the Kashipur garden house? Narendra said, Yes. One day, while meditating, I asked Kali to hold my hand. Kali said to me, When I touched your body, I felt something like an electric shock coming to my body. But you must not tell this to anybody else. You must not tell this to anybody here. Give me your promise. Yam said, There is a special purpose in his transmission of power to you. He will accomplish much work through you. One day the master wrote on a piece of paper, Narayan will teach people. Narendra said, But I said to him, I won't do any such thing. Thereupon he said, Your very bones will do it. He has given me charge of Sharat. Sharat is now yearning for God. The Kundalini is awakened in him. Yam said, He must be careful. The dead leaves do not accumulate there. Perhaps you remember what the Master used to say. In a lake, the fish makes holes so that they may rest there. But if dead leaves accumulate in the holes, the fish do not go there. Narendra said, The Master used to call me Narayana. Yam said, Yes, I know he did. Narendra said, When he was ill, he would not allow me to pour water to wash his hands. At Kasipur he said, Now the key is in my hands. He will give up his body when he knows who he is. Yam said, Didn't he say it when you were in Nirukalp Samadhi? Narendra said, Yes. At the time, it seemed to me. I had no body. I felt only my face. I was studying law at home to prepare for the examination. Suddenly I said to myself, What am I doing? Yam said, Didn't it happen when the master was at Kasipur? Narendra said, Yes. Like an insane person, I ran out of our house. He asked me, What do you want? I replied, I want to remain immersed in Samadhi. He said, What a small mind you have. Go beyond Samadhi. Samadhi is a very trifling thing. Yam said, Yes. He used to say that Vijnana is the stage after Jnana. It is like going up and down the stairs after reaching the road, after reaching the roof. We shall stop here. Chant the name of the Lord and His glory unceasingly, that the mirror of the heart might be wiped clean and quenched that mighty forest fire only lust raging furiously within. O name, stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart, opening its cup to knowledge of thyself, O self, drowned deep in the waves of his bliss, tasting his nectar at every step, bathing in his name, that bath for weary souls. Various are thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power recites. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my wretchedness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O oh, my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and perbearing like a tree, take no honor to thyself, give honor to all, chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O oh, Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue, the playthings of lust or the toys of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for Thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is Thy servant, O sweet one. In Thy mercy, consider him as just beneath Thy feet. How have I long for the day? An instant separation from the O Lord will be as a thousand years. 
But my heart burns away with its desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet, let me be in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence, though it tears my soul asunder. O thou, who still has the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtues attain tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good be at all people, may the sovereign righteously rule the earth, may all beings ever attain what is good, may the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time, may the earth be blessed with crops, may all countries be freed from calamity, may holy men live without fear. May the Lord destroy of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.